The wind does not break the tree that bends. The early bird gets the worm. What do these two proverbs have to do with engineering? These proverbs inspire us on how to live our daily lives, but they also open our minds to wonder, what else can we learn from nature? Because when we learn how and why nature works, and we apply that to solving problems, that is called biomimicry. Engineers do this all the time. Think about that tree I mentioned, the ability of trees to bend without breaking, not because of the root structure, but because of their alternating hard and soft layers, has inspired stretchable electronic devices. Now, think about that bird, the ability of birds to glide through the air, not flap their wings, but glide, has inspired modern-day aircraft. In fact, the Wright brothers were avid bird watchers, and they even studied ornithology texts. Those are books about birds. <laughs> but flight is not the only thing that we can learn from birds. Engineers have also learned that the vibrant colors of bird feathers are created through nanostructures. And they have used that as inspiration for the design of dyeless paints that don't fade. In my own work on sensors, I learned that birds have an internal GPS system. Rather than relying on satellite signals, they can sense the Earth's magnetic field lines with tiny magnets in their heads. And I use that as inspiration for the design of an electrical current sensor. The potential of biomimicry is endless, but it takes getting past those noticeable features. So don't let the name fool you. It's more than mimicking. It's about learning fundamental principles and connecting ideas across domains of knowledge. As someone that's been investigating the process of biomimicry since graduate school, I inherently get it. But it's taken some time for me to get good at teaching this topic. So let me take you back nine years when I was just starting out as an assistant professor. I had recently completed a PhD in engineering design, and one of the first courses I got to teach was engineering design at the sophomore level. I was excited to be teaching this course because it focuses on the fundamentals, and it's taught using project-based learning. At the time, the students were designing a bicycle, or what we called a human-powered vehicle, for a client in the community with a disability. And like most young faculty, I was ready with enthusiasm to teach these students everything I knew. And in the second half of the semester, I taught them biomimicry. I gave them an opportunity to apply it to their course project with an assignment. But it was a bust. They weren't getting it. They were hung up on those noticeable features. For example, when taking inspiration from a frog for a propulsion mechanism, the vehicle design had legs so it could jump, because that's what frogs do. They jump. But you see, biomimicry is about inspiration, not imitation. Imitating is copying something directly, like in this example with the frog. But inspiration is about learning and thinking critically about that biological information. As an engineer, I'm used to things not going well the first time. So I revised, and I tried again the following academic year. But it, too, was a bust. And so now I had this trend emerging, and the researcher part of my brain had to figure this out, had to figure out what was missing. Because the students, they were excited to be learning biomimicry, but their work was showing me that they were struggling with it. So this brought me to a fundamental question. What does it mean to take inspiration from nature for engineering design? Because I know it when I see it. But I was having a hard time articulating this to my students. So being an academic, I went to the literature with this question as my lens. 
And I reviewed hundreds of articles and book chapters, and I discovered some patterns. I found that there are seven inspiration categories that fall into two groups, physical and non-physical. The physical aspects of biological systems are those tangible things that you can see and touch, such as forms, architectures, surfaces, and materials. This is how nature does what it does. Whereas non-physical aspects of biological systems, those are the intangible things, such as functions, processes, or system interconnections. This is why nature does what it does. In the case of flight, bird wings regulate pressure zones to create lift, and that's a function. That function is achieved by the shape of the wing, and that's a form. These concepts of form and function can be understood independently, but the secret, the secret to creating elegant designs inspired by nature is when you understand how the physical and the non-physical are connected and you apply that together. That is what makes airplanes and other bio-inspired designs so successful. A couple of years later, I had the opportunity to try again, and I gave that assignment. And this time, I got different results. This time, it worked! The students were getting it. They were connecting the dots between the physical and the non-physical, and they created some really great designs inspired by nature. So now, when taking inspiration from the frog for a propulsion mechanism, they were still thinking about jumping. But now, they were learning about the forms, the architectures, and the functions involved in jumping. You see in this sketch in the bottom left-hand corner, there's an elastic element. And that's because they learned that the tendon of the frog leg stores potential energy, much like a spring or a rubber band does. And above it, there's a mechanism that allows that rapid release of that stored energy to create the linear propulsion. My desire to better understand biomimicry and improve as an educator helped my students to be successful. So you might be wondering, why teach biomimicry to engineers? And my response would be design validation. I'm in my 10th year as a faculty member, and I know that students absolutely love extra credit. But evolution, it does not give extra credit. Evolution is a harsh grader, and the natural designs that we see in the world around us today are the ones that have passed the test. So the next time that you're outside for a walk or simply gazing through a window, stop, take a moment to observe the birds, the trees, and the other amazing organisms in our world. Give yourself an opportunity to ask nature for inspiration. Nature is our design catalog, and we just need to learn how to order from it. <laughs>